going on guys hip pause here with a quick video on how to get your AI to actually be able to engage uh, in combat with other AI as opposed to only players uh, there's a couple of there's actually basically two main things that you need to do but I'm gonna demo it really quick I got two teams here uh, and when they come around this corner they are going to fight it's not perfect I have some more stuff I need to do but you can see they shot each other um, and they're also going for the cheese here to steal the cheese. Um, each team is trying to get the other one's cheese. And they won't attack each other's uh, teammates or anything like that. So you can see this guy's stolen the cheese. Um, and he's trying to get it back. Uh, I do have issues with them not knowing that other people have the the flag or essentially right so I have some more stuff I need to do here so obviously that's incorrect you know which is kinda of funny that it's incorrect but it still needs to happen and they also they're, they're capturing the flag based on uh, whether or not they touch it to the to their flag so if two enemies are capturing the flag together they uh, actually um, basically uh, you know glitch so but but what's important here is that they're fighting each other and if I were to simply take the flags out of the equation um, the only thing that would be bad would be that they would be wandering so the chances that them coming into contact would be less uh, if I move the flags like way back they have much more of a chance of um, coming into contact with each other uh, and not having, you know, and actually not making it to the flag here. Uh, but the thing is, is you know, I don't want to spawn them in front of the flag, so I need to move them back. This is kind of neither here nor there, but it is a factor on what looks like, you know, in case anybody's wondering why, why my shit's all broken, it, it's actually doing exactly what I'm telling it to do, and anything that's broken is correct. Like it should be doing that with the way the code is. Um, so let's take a look. There's two, like I said, there's two major things we need to get the pawn to be able to engage with other pawns, and that is, or AI. I, when I say pawn, I mean AI. Um, on the pawn sensing component itself, here where we actually receive a sense, we see somebody. The the pawn sensing needs to make sure that it has only sense players unchecked. Okay, it won't. It'll only obviously. Uh, this should be obvious, right? So it'll only sense player-controlled pawns or not. We don't. We want them to be able to see other AI. So we need the player-controlled pawns. You know, we need to uh, not care about that. Uh, and then the other thing is in the EQS. Um, I found something out. So here, where they um, they do their enemy thing. If I take a look, uh, we're running this EQS here. Okay, at the line of sight. So I'll go find that guy here. I've changed the querier to from the player context to the enemy context. Now the player context, let's, uh, let's actually do this. The player context was the way it was being used. Um, is that here? Hang on. Here we go. Uh, player context, right there. So this originally was get player character zero, which meant only player zero was going to be read and fed and be able to use in the EQS. Well, I now have one called enemy context, and that one essentially uses the blackboard. Okay, we get the blackboard value and uses that as the basically the context. So this gets ran anytime this gets ran because what happens is we have the enemy. Uh, well, let's let's say okay, our enemy is set, right? And now we're going to want to run some EQS here to get a line of sight on him, right? So we run this query here, the line of sight query, right? Then when this gets ran, it hits the context, which gets ran, okay? So this will actually run every time the EQS gets ran. So this can update dynamically. So anytime he, like if he changes his enemy, that will update and the query will shift and it will, he'll now be creating a grid around that guy. So this right here, so basically what we do is, I'll uh, notice provide single actor actually has an output here uh, for the query or actor. So he's basically just kind of, I think it's a, it says it's an actor reference, but we can, we don't need to cast it or anything. We can just go straight to, hey, let get his blackboard, get the value of the enemy, okay, uh, blackboard key, 
and then we'll let's just make sure it's valid and then we'll cast it to actor because this is expecting an actor um, this is receiving value as an object okay which is not an actor so we cast the actor just to make sure and that's what we pipe in and that's it that's all we needed to do and they'll fight each other now so they'll sense each other they'll add each other as the enemy key and then when there is an enemy key and they're fighting and and they're trying to get sights on each other they will uh, run EQS around each other to determine what each can see and can't see and use that in their combat tactics It's totally freaking awesome. So hopefully you guys found that useful. I know it's short not very informative um, but uh, it, it was something that I just figured out and uh, it's actually come in extremely handy as this right here I originally had thought that the um because when I was doing the player context, I, I thought that I had to figure out a way to get a handle on this particular class so that I could write to the variables ex from an external source. But for some dumb reason, it never dawned on me that, hey, wait, this is, this is actually here and being ran. Why do I need to look this up when I could just have this look other stuff up that I already know how to get a handle on? right I can get the game state you know and things like that from here no problem I can get all actors of class from here no problem but the question was was okay uh, how, what class would this count as uh, if I needed to get this from elsewhere like if I need to read this from elsewhere I, I still don't know how to do that uh, except by here right because I can just read this same thing from elsewhere so this this is basically just looking up something that everything else can look up anyway so hopefully that helps you guys as much as it helped me and again don't forget uh, to turn off the only sensing pawns uh, player controlled pawns if you want them to fight AI, uh, against other AI um, the just really really quick uh, they are not attacking each other because I've given them tags um, and the tags uh, <coughs> excuse me the tags are basically uh, the team ID so this is a spawner and when it spawns what it does is it actually tells each spawn what team it's on based on this variable here so if I were to edit this guy um, uh, what happens is after each one is spawned here uh, we cast it and then we set the tag uh, of that character right so then what we do is when we do our pawn sensing then we can check hey um, is is the pawn that I've sensed is his tag equal to my tag right self tag here if it is he's on my team I don't want him as my enemy right if it's not he's viable he's a viable enemy he's on the he's on another team so that's how I did that so they'll pair up um, and so like for instance if I really wanted to just for shits uh, by the way the tutorials over you guys can leave <laughs> everybody get out no I'm just kidding uh, but let's say we want 10 on each team. Let's get a let's get an epic war going here. It might lag a little bit, but me. Kind of hard to see because they are small in a, in a relatively large world here. But they should. Uh... So they're all going for the flag. There's a very solid chance that they don't see each other because they're kind of going around the other way. But now they're they're pretty much shooting. I just took out two of them, so I can Rambo over here. And then every time one dies, a new one spawns, so it does eventually become relatively difficult for them to get to the flag. <laughs> what is that over there? Like, that was a shadow of a broken ragdoll. No, they're going to make it to the flag. Yeah, they're going to make it. This guy's going to get it. He's got it, and then this guy's going to steal it from him. See, <laughs> they fucking, that, like, I don't have the whole CTF thing. Uh, finished yet I'm still working on that um, but I did want to interject this video in as the the moment that I figured out how to get them to actually fight each other because I was actually rather excited about that I think it's pretty goddamn cool that we can now have AI that will wage war against other AI and like I, like I said they're not perfect they don't always keep the right um, they don't always pick up an enemy target correctly and you can see they behave once they get the flag they misbehave okay all these idiots have actually had the flag at one point and they've never been told to that they don't have the flag anymore so that is uh, in fact that is exactly what is supposed to be happening according to the code it's just I haven't gotten to that yet so hopefully you guys understand why why that's happening it is actually kinda of funny 
Like he's still he's still walking like that, and notice that he was still able to run reloads and things, which is cool because we're using montages for upper body blends. And these guys all think they have flags too. So, like I said, it's the the CTF portion of it is buggy, but I did keep it running because what it is doing very nicely for me right now is driving them to a basically a single kind of focal combat point. And it seems like one team is sort of winning against the other here. There's more guys heading this way. You know, if I didn't add this, they would be randomly wandering around, and we would get a like five or six of them just completely wasting time over there, not not participating in in the any anything <coughs> excuse me anything important, and we'd have five or six over here or something like that, and they would never come into contact with each other. So this way, I kind of forced them all to. And bugs aside from the CTF thing, I mean, obviously, look like hardly any of them are even are, like don't think they have the flag at this point, so it's broken, but not that big of a deal. Um, still, what's important is what they're doing when they don't have the flag. They're shooting at each other, they're running away from each other, they're running to points where they can see each other, and ducking away from each other when they need to go and reload and stuff. So th while the passing of the flag thing is broken, everything else is working pretty goddamn well, to be honest with you. It's working rather nicely. Um, not too many of them are making it through. You know, and you can see the tide of the battle is actually going back and forth here. There, there's it's clustering on this side now, and then eventually it'll recluster over here, and they'll be uh, kind of grouped up over there. So it's pretty cool. It's dynamic. You know, they they kind of it just evens itself out left and right. And once I get them so that see what's supposed to happen, I'm just going to explain this. When one grabs the flag, the other ones that are on that team are supposed to be notified. It just doesn't happen yet because I haven't done it yet. Um, but his whole, all his teammates will get notified, and when what they'll do is they're going to actually go and they're going to act like this. But right now, this guy's he's in the right spot, but he's doing it for all the wrong reasons, right? He thinks he's getting the flag too. But what's really going to happen in the end is he's actually going to stick with this guy to defend him and shoot. He's going to he's going to be this guy's scout, so he's going to stay a little bit ahead of that guy, but he's going to keep waiting for him. He's gonna go here. Okay, it's clear. You know, he'll he'll keep shooting. Bang, bang, bang. And then, as this guy keeps moving, so the team will basically behave properly. And then what what else will happen is when this guy has the enemy, like the flag, uh, the guys that are you know that own that flag are going to know about that and focus their efforts on taking him down. So it's gonna hopefully they're gonna semi behave. See, like right now, see how this is like a squad, right? I like that, but they're doing it for the wrong reason. You know what I'm saying? Right now, they're running to him to to merely steal the flag for themselves. They don't know that that this flag isn't at its original location. They're just going for it, you know. And that's why they're all getting put in this. But it's going to be so much cooler when these, you know, four guys or five guys that are around him are guns out shooting at all the enemies, trying to protect their homie to get him to the flag. That's going to be freaking awesome when they do that. And I, and I want them to look like, you know, be in this kind of cluster, but I don't want them to be, um, you know, misbehaving like this, thinking they own the flag. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do, too, is the, the spawner itself is actually going to determine who's an attacker and who's a defender, and basically it's going to try to split the team 50-50. Um, to make it okay you know the, the first five are attackers the second five that spawn are defenders so the defenders are gonna be like having a completely different set of decisions they're going to try and find places around here where they can hide where they can stay and basically shoot at anything that comes into their path so their behavior is going to be more of a stationary like almost like a turret they'll chase their enemies down if they go if they get away from them but until they get start getting away from them, they're not going to do that. They're going to kind of stay still and wait for the enemy to come. So half of them will do that, and then the uh, then the other half will go out and look for the flag. And what will, what I can do if I'm smart is have the spawners basically the 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 spawner is actually acting kind of like the team captain. Okay, that's what I want this to have happen. Um, and what I want it to do is to be able to say, okay. We're down by two captures. They've got two captures. So I'm going to actually go ahead and I'm going to put two more guys on a, either captures or 
on um, defense, right? Uh, either attacking or defense. So if they're if they're stealing our flag too often, they're getting to our flag too easily. I'm probably going to want him to go more defense, right? Once once we hold that for a little while, then what we'll do is we'll try to do a, you know, we'll we'll try to to wean more guys on attacking to push them forward, you know. So that they kind of have like a hive mind, uh, which is going to be kind of not like players because players tend to read the field themselves. So I may or may not have the the Ratsies themselves also kind of have like maybe 10% free will or something like that so they can override their main commands if something else is much more important. For instance, he's told to attack the flag and he's going this way, but the enemy is coming to the enemy is just stolen his flag and he's right here so he was running out doo -doo 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 I'm going to get the flag and then behind me as I could turn that corner another enemy had already been snuck around right here and he's just gone and got the flag I'm right here right I'm told to be an attacker but I need to turn into a defender I need I need all of my teammates to to basically crush the guy who has the flag. I need them all to focus on him. Essentially, if I can get it working correctly, in theory, the final score after a 14-hour match should be 0-0. Nobody should be able to get the flag from the other um, because of how it should even out. Now, that statistics are going to say that that's not going to happen. There's going to be the, the AIs that get through. Um, but that's all part that that needs to happen too. So it's important that that the dynamics allow for that as well. So there's a lot more work to do, like I said. But there's you know it's it's coming along, man. It's really cool. And you know what? This is like some of the most enjoyable shit to me. I just love doing this. I don't know if anybody else has gotten into the AI stuff, but trying to get them to behave. I mean, the fact that I can hit play here and I can just sit back and I can watch my ants go, you know. Like, they're my little ants, you know, they're my little spots, my little dots. And I'm not even in this fight. And if I were actually scoring this, which I'm not, um, one team would win, eventually. Uh, there's a lot of misbehaving going on in here right now, but like I said, they're, they're, they're actually doing as told. There's nothing that they're doing right now that shouldn't act happen. Actually, there is one thing that they do that shouldn't, that I don't understand. Um, that's how every once in a while... S like this guy can sometimes not get a target and I think what happens is he's sensing too many pawns and his targets going brr, brr, brr. it's going back and forth and then he's making a decision as soon as he turns around he resenses a pawn so what I need to do is I need to check to see if he has an enemy already and if he does have an enemy can he still see him and if not then he is open to take a new enemy otherwise he's gonna chase down his that way like in these cluster bone things where they're all circled in together and they're constantly kinda just running around back and forth because they, they're too much indecision about who, who they're supposed to fight um, that'll be less chaotic in their in their code right I gotta take care of that kinda shit too so like I said there's tons and tons and tons of layering that's going to happen on this whole thing. Uh, I'm not going to make it a tutorial or anything like that series. I am going to come through with all my breakthroughs though. Anytime they do something um, that I finally figure out, uh, like for instance how to get them to even shoot at other AI, that was actually a big breakthrough for me to figure this out right here. Uh, this was not obvious. In hindsight, sure, why not? It's completely obvious. Yeah, it makes sense. But before I knew to do this, I was always looking at this one going, how am I going to change this if I want them to fight other AI? Like, I don't get it. And boom, you know, we just do it like that. So, like I said, that is awesome. So, hopefully you guys found that cool as I did. And like what you see here, this is pretty cool. Now, their ragdolls are all effed up, obviously. Um, you can see that. He's Tails doing a dance up his bunghole. But... That, again, is neither here nor there. A lot of this stuff that's going on here is neither here nor there. It's actually right, all right here, but it's not something I'm, you know, not final or anything like that. But anyways, Hipon signing off. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.